Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavari Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavan Ebyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare So we're reading from the Krishna book. We're on chapter number 45, which is entitled Krishna Recovers His Teacher's Son. So we heard how Lord Krishna had killed Kamsa and then he was able to release Vasudeva and Devaki from the prison house of Kamsa. So when Vasudeva and Devaki came out of prison and they saw that Lord Krishna had killed Kamsa, then they were very, they, they were amazed and they, they, they were seeing Krishna not like their son, but they could understand he must, maybe he's the Supreme Lord. Actually, Krishna was only 11 years old at this time. But he was already like a mature young man. <laughs> So Vasudeva and Devaki were giving Krishna great respect and Krishna wanted them to treat him like a child, like their son. So Krishna used his yoga maya, he, put, he used the yoga maya influence so that Vasudeva and Devaki would see Krishna and Balaram like their children. So Vasudeva and Devaki were thinking after Krishna, Krishna by his yoga maya, they saw Krishna just like their child. And they saw Balaram like the elder brother of Lord Krishna. So they both, so Lord Krishna began to speak to uh, Vasudeva and Devaki, and he said to them, my, my dear father and mother, we know you've been very worried about us. And you were not able, you, you were not able to be with us when we were babies. And you were not even with us when we were young boys. Only now we've got you out of the prison house, we have a chance to be together. Mm. 
So it, it was actually Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda who had brought up Krishna and Balaram, and they had enjoyed their childhood pastimes. So, usually the parents, they enjoy very much to bring up the child when the child is very young. It's great pleasure for the parents. Even in the animal kingdom, you see dogs and even lions, when they have, when they have pups, when they have cubs, uh, when they give birth, they take care of their offspring. So Vasudeva and Devaki, they were always worried about protecting Krishna and Balaram. And that was why Vasudeva brought Krishna over to the home of Nanda Maharaj immediately after he was born. And Balarama, he was originally in the womb of Devaki, but he was transferred by Yoga Maya to the womb of Rohini and he took birth over in Nanda Maharaj's house. So Vasudeva and Devaki, they were always in ang they were always in anxiety to how to protect Krishna and Balaram because they knew Kamsa wanted to kill Krishna. So Krishna says that it, we were very unlucky that we could not be brought up by our own parents. We couldn't enjoy being with our mother and father. And then Krishna said, he said, you know, to my dear father and mother, a man cannot repay the debt to his parents. The, ma the material body is given to the man by the grace of his parents. So with the human body, we're able to do all our religious activities. And we can try to also fulfill our desires. And we may even be able to get a lot of wealth in the human life. And it's only in the human life it's possible that you can get liberation from material existence. So we get the body by the grace of our mother and father. So it's important that the child, the son especially, should try to satisfy his parents. He 
he should try to give them wealth or he should try to satisfy them by his activities. And if you don't satisfy your parents, then at the time of death, you may have to, you're, you're punished. You have to eat your own flesh. We should give protection to old parents. We should protect parents. We should protect the chaste wife. We should take care of children. And we should take care of the spiritual teachers and the brahmanas. And if we don't do that, then we're like a dead person. So Krishna said, Krishna said to his mother and father, I know you've always been worried about us, to protect us. And Krishna said, we, I could not do any service for you. We just wasted our time. We could not serve our mother and father. So please forgive us for being sinful. So in this way Krishna was speaking like an innocent boy, speaking very sweet words, very pleasing to the mother and father. So Vasudeva and Devaki, when they heard him speak like this, they were so pleased, they couldn't say anything, and they just embraced Krishna and Balaram and cried. So in this way, Krishna uh, help, uh, spoke nice, took care, pleased his mother and father, and they were happy, they were very satisfied to hear him speak like that. So then Krishna spoke to his grandfather. Krishna's grandfather is called Ugrasena. And he said that Ugrasena would now be the king of the Yadu kingdom. Ugrasena was Krishna's grandfather and Kamsa was his uncle. So Ugrasena should have been the king, but Kamsa put Ugrasena in the prison and he made himself the king. But when Krishna killed Kamsa, then he re released Ugrasena from the prison. Krishna 
And then he told Ugrasena, now you should become the king. <coughs> and so Krishna was telling Ugrasena, you become the king and I'm your subject, I'm under your rule. So Krishna was the grandson of Ugrasena and Krishna was also a member of the Yadu dynasty. So Krishna accepted Ugrasena as king. And Krishna told him, you should be the king because we will be happy to be your servants. And Krishna said, I will cooperate with you and make sure that all the other kings that they give proper respect and pay you taxes. And Krishna told, told Ugrasena, because I will be protecting you, you will be given honor even by the demigods in the heavenly planet. And Krishna explained, he said, that there are many other kings, they ran away out of fear of Kamsa and they had gone away, but now Kamsa is dead, they will come back to their kingdom. So Krishna said to Ugrasena that when they come back, you should encourage them and tell them that they'll be safe and that the whole kingdom will be peaceful. So in to, to encourage all the kings to come back, Ugrasena gave them all presents and he gave them comforts, made them feel comfortable and in this way encouraged them that now it's safe because Kamsa is dead. All the, all the people in the city of Mathura were also happy to live in Mathura because they know now they're protected by the strong arms of Krishna and Balaram. Because Krishna and Balaram were present, so there was good government, and so the people of Mathura were satisfied. They were able to satisfy all their material desires and they had everything they needed. They lived very nicely. But most important was that they, they saw Krishna and Balaram every day. They could see Krishna and Balaram face to face and so they could forget all the miseries of life. Uh, 
่ําคัญก็คือพวกเขาเนี่ยสามารถเห็นหน้ากับบารามีซึ่งซึ่งหน้าได้มันก็เลยทําให้พวกเขาเนี่ยเป็นอิสระจากความทุกข์ทรมานทางวัตถุทั้งหลายทำให้เขาลืมความทุกข์เหล่านั้น Krishna and Balaram would always appear very nicely dressed and smiling, and they would look at all the people and smile at them. So just seeing the presence of Krishna, it was like a medicine for the people of Mathura. Even the old men of Mathura felt become like they were becoming young and they became strong just by seeing Krishna and Balaram. Even the old men of Mathura felt become like they were becoming young and they became strong just by seeing Krishna and Balaram. Even the old men of Mathura felt become like they were becoming young and they became strong just by seeing Krishna and Balaram. So Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda were also there at Mathura because Krishna and Balaram were there. So Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda had come there, and they and they wanted to go back to Vrindavan. So Krishna and Balaram came in front of Nanda and Yashoda, and they embraced each other. And so Krishna and Balaram they spoke to Nanda and Yashoda, and they said, they said, although we were born from Vasudev and Devaki. Actually, you are a real father and mother. From, from our birth and all of our childhood, we've been with you, and you've been taking care of us. You gave us more love than we could get from, uh, than anybody could get from their own children. And Krishna said, "You're you're really our father and mother because you brought us up just like your own children." And you protected us, and you, and, and and we know that when you go back to Vrindavan, you will feel separation from us. But Krishna and Balaram tell Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda, "Don't worry, we are going to come back to Vrindavan. Just after we give some." Pleasure to our father and mother Vasudev and Devaki. After that, then we're going to come back to Vrindavan. And we also want to take care of our grandfather Ugrasena and the other family members. So then they give presents to Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. They give them cloth and ornaments and different copper utensils. So 
so they gave presents to all of the friends and the neighbors who would come there with Nanda Maharaj. They'd come from Vrindavan to Mathura. Krishna and Balaram gave them all gifts and pleased them all. And hearing Krishna's sweet words, Krishna speaking so nicely to him, Nanda Maharaj embraced Krishna and Balara, and there was tears in his eyes. He went back to Vrindavan. And so then Vasudev wants to initiate his two sons, Krishna and Balaram. He wants to give them the sacred thread the second birth. So Vasudev got the family priest to come. The family priest of the Yadu dynasty is Gargamuni. So he called for Gargamuni to come to do the thread ceremony, to give the sacred thread for Krishna and Balaram. So at that time, when they were doing the ceremony, Vasudev gave charity. He gave a lot of ornaments to the brahmanas, and he gave many of them cows also. Then Vasudev remembered that when Krishna was born, at that time he was in the jail, he was a prisoner in Kamsa's jail. He wanted to give charity because of the birth of Krishna, but he couldn't do it because he was in the jail, so he gave charity in his mind. At that time he had given 10,000 cows in charity to the Brahmins. <laughs> Actually, Kamsa had taken away all of the cows of Vasudev, but with the death of Kamsa, then Vasudev took the cows back, and he can give charity to the Brahmanas. So just like in his mind previously, in his mind he'd given 10,000 cows in charity. This time he actually gave 10,000 cows to the Brahmanas. So Krishna and Balaram were given the sacred thread and then they were given the chanting, they were told to chant the Gayatri Mantra. So anybody who chants the Gayatri Mantra, they have to follow certain principles and they have to make vows. So Krishna and Balaram, they also followed all the principles. They also did everything that they're supposed to do. So Gargamuni, 
he was the guru of the Yadu dynasty and he instructed them to how to chant the Gayatri Mantra. So Prabhupada points out everyone should be initiated and they should have a, a guru, they should be trained by an acharya. So Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram, even though they're the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they also wanted to show the right example. They also took the, the teacher, the, the guru, and they took initiation and they went for training. Yeah, you accept the spiritual teacher to help you advance in spiritual knowledge. So it's a custom after you're initiated in the Gayatri Mantra, you should live away from home for some time. You should live in the home of the Guru to be trained by the Guru. And you have to work under the care of, when you're under the care of the Guru, you should be like a servant and you should do all the simple duties like cleaning and washing clothes and different things. So Krishna and Balaram, they did this, they both went as brahmacharis to live with the Guru. So they went to the ashram of Sandipani Muni. And Sandipani Muni, his ashram was in a place which was called Avantipur. Now it's called Ujjain. But in the time of Krishna and Balaram, it was called Avantipur. So the spiritual teacher is supposed to be treated like representative of God. So Krishna and Balaram, when they stayed there, they they did like that. They they worshipped their guru and they offered obeisances to him. Because they were the brahmacharis, Krishna and Balaram were the brahmacharis, so they were under the care of their guru. So that when they stayed with their guru, the guru instructed them, he gave them spiritual knowledge from the Vedas. And he also taught them, the Guru also taught them the knowledge of Upanishads, which are also part of the Vedas. So Krishna and Balaram, they were born in the family of Kshatriyas. Vasudeva was a Kshatriya. So then the, the Guru also taught them some of the things, knowledge which was useful for Kshatriya. Krishna 
หรือกเกษตรียเพราะฉะนั้นพวกเขาเนี่ยจึงได้เรียนรู้เกี่ยวกับศาสตร์ทางทหารการเมืองด้วยคุณปู่ก็สอนตรงนี้ไปเลย He taught them about politics and how to how to make peace and how to how to fight and how to rule. ก็เป็นวิชาทางการเมืองที่จะต้องเรียนต้องมีวิชาสร้างสันติภาพวิชาการต่อสู้การการตัวการแบ่งแยกการปกครอง Yeah, when you have, when you do politics, and you have to deal with your different enemies, you have to know how to deal with them. So this was all taught to Krishna and Balaram. Just like the ocean, you get a lot, all the water. The ocean, it, all the water in the river comes from the ocean. And the water comes in the form it comes from the cloud. The cloud takes the water from the ocean. And then it comes over the land and pours the water on the land, and it comes down in the form of a river to the ocean. So Krishna and Balaram, they're God. They're the source of all knowledge, but they play like ordinary boys. So that's why Krishna and Balaram taking knowledge from the spiritual teacher. But they would only have to hear one time from the teacher, and everything he taught them, they would remember. It's mentioned that there are sixty-four different arts. So Krishna and Balaram stayed there for sixty-four days and sixty-four nights, and they learned everything. During the day, they would learn the subject, and by the time night, they would be expert in that knowledge. So they learned. How to write dramas? They learned how to sing and how to dance. They learned how to do rangoli. Painting on the floor, putting the de all the de designs on the floor made from rice and flour, different colors. And they learned how to how to use different water pots to make different sounds. And they learned how to decorate with flowers and how to decorate with tea leg. So, Krishna and Balaram learned how to dress. Their hair in different styles and put the helmet 
different positions on the head. They learned how to do magic. And they learned how to dress up so that nobody can recognize you. And they learned how to make different kinds of drinks and syrups for different tastes. They learned how to how to how to solve riddles. Riddles, how to solve rid puzzles, how to do how to find the solution to puzzles. And they learned the alphabet, they learned how to solve the do crossword puzzles even. And they learned about architecture, how to construct buildings. And they learned how to recognize different jewels. And they learned about how to study the, the ground, the soil, the dirt, how to find out what minerals are there, what the soil is good for. And they learned about getting medicine from the different plants and herbs. And they could they learned how to teach parrots to speak so and 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 how to answer questions of people. So Krishna and Balaram learned how to understand different languages of different countries. Even they could speak with the animals and the birds. And they learned how to make airplanes with flowers. And they learned what is auspicious, what is good uh, auspicious things and what is not auspicious. So they learned all these different 64 arts and they learned everything perfectly. So then they asked to their teacher, they said, you've taught us everything, now we want to repay you. So please tell us, how can we, what should we do for you? What daxin do you want? We should give you some payment for your teaching. So tell us what you want. So Sandipani Muni, the guru, he talked to his wife and then they told Krishna and Balaram, they said that we understand you're very special people, that you're not ordinary students. So we, are, we would like you to bring back our dead son because our son died in the ocean, drowned in the ocean at Prabhashetra. So can you bring him back? Uh, 
กไปพวกท่านเนี่ยเป็นบุคลิกภาพที่พิเศษมากๆเพราะฉะนั้นถ้าเกิดว่าเป็นไปได้เนี่ยหลังจากที่ท่านสันนิปันมุนีได้คุยกับภรรยาก็บอกว่าข้าอยากจะได้ลูกชายของข้าที่จงไปในน้ำมหาสมุทรนี้เนี่ยเอาเขาคืนมาได้ไหม So Krishna and Balaram immediately went to the ocean, and the deity of the ocean came out, and they told him, "You know, that give us back the son of our guru, that our guru's son he died in the ocean, give him back to us." So the ocean deity said, "Well, I didn't take the boy." He said, "There was there's a big demon called Panchajana, and he lives in the in the bottom of the ocean, in the in the form of a conch shell, and your son was taken by him." <laughs> So Krishna left Balaram on the shore. He said, "You wait here." And Krishna went into the ocean. He went into the bottom of the ocean. He found the demon Panchajana, and he killed him immediately. But he couldn't find the the son of the teacher. He thought he'd be in the belly of the the demon, but he wasn't there. But anyway, he took out the conch shell. There was a conch shell there, which. Was in the demon's body, and Krishna took that conch shell. So that conch shell is Panchajanya, which Krishna blows at the beginning of battle of Kurukshetra. And they say that this demon Panchajana, he was like, he was like, he was actually a devotee from the spiritual world who had come to the material world as a demon to take part in Krishna's pastimes. Just like Jai and Vijay came from the spiritual world, they came as demons. So this Pancha Janya also came. And so Krishna took that conch shell, that Pancha Janya conch shell. That is actually spiritual. It's actually eternal conch shell. It's very powerful. Just by hearing it, all the people in hell become purified and free from all their sins. Okay, so Krishna then decided. He said, "Okay, we couldn't find the son of our guru here." So he said, "We'll go to Yamaraj. We'll find him with the Yamaraj." So then Krishna and Balaram went to the place of Yamaraj. And when Krishna came there, he blew the conch shell. And when Yamaraj heard the conch shell, immediately he came out and he offered the obeisances to Lord Krishna. So Yamaraj understood Krishna and Balaram are actually the supreme Lord. And he came out to ask them, "Please tell me what can I do? How can I serve you?" So Krishna said, "Yes, we want our teacher's son." Now, 
So hearing Krishna's instruction, Yamaraj immediately went and he brought the boy and gave him to Krishna and Balaram. So Krishna and Balaram brought the boy back, gave them to give the boy to his father, Sandipani Muni, and then they asked Sandipani Muni. What what else would you like? Is there something else we can do for you? But Sandipani Muni said, No, he said, I'm fully satisfied. I'm so fortunate to have such wonderful disciples like you two. And Santipani Muni said, he said, actually I know you don't need my blessings, but it's my duty as your guru, I want to bless you. So I bless you that whatever you speak will remain eternally fresh. And your teachings will be honored everywhere for all time. And your teachings will always remain new and important. Just like Bhagavad Gita, that's very important. Not only on this planet, but in other universes all over the creation. So then Krishna and Balaram return back on their chariot and they return back home to Mathura. And they travelled at high speed, they travelled at the speed of the wind and they made sounds like the crashing of clouds. So all the people of Mathura, they hadn't seen Krishna and Balaram for a long time. They'd been away, remember how many days? 64 days they were there in, in Ujjain, in Avantipur. So Krishna and Balaram came back to Mathura, all the people were so happy to see them again. Just like a person may have some valuable property, they may lose it. So if they get it back, they're so happy. Okay, so that's the end of this chapter. Are there, are there any questions? Really? <laughs> yeah, I can't see anyone resting. So. Oh yeah, got one. Got a question from Shyam. 
días. ฟิชนักกรมหาราชดานาบัตรนาวิสัยเซ็ตแม่ฮัมบูออฟิเซสอ่าคําถามของพี่นะคะอาจารย์ค่ะตัวบางทีเอ่อเวลาพี่อธิ
she not against about Krishna, but she against in some practice, you know, Guru Maharaj. She don't understand about why I should do something like that. That I, but I'm trying to to tell her everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but you just be careful, you know that, that maybe you don't tell her too much. <laughs> yes, but sometimes I feel tired about my mom. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, but I I try I try my best to to give Krishna to her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Yeah, just be patient and tolerant, and you know, be happy that she's open-minded. Although she's you know she's been a Buddhist all her life, and she's religious and she believes all the gods. Okay. You know, yeah. if, if you sometimes be, sometimes she doesn't, sometimes she not. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, yeah, she's an older woman. You're not going to. You have to remember, you're her daughter, so she she would prefer that you she tell you. She doesn't like you telling her. She doesn't like yes, you yes. teach. That's the problem. That you're her daughter, so she thinks of you like her daughter, and she thinks she she shouldn't she should instruct you. She doesn't think you should be telling her. Yes, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> so that's a problem. Yes. But um, I also praying for her to tell Krishna um, that's about this, uh, I mean, um, because Bhagavan in every uh, living entity heart, right? Then I always tell Krishna about, oh, please let my mom to understand <laughs> something like that from Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, just pray to Krishna. And be kind, be very kind and hum humble and respectful to your mother. That's the main thing. Keep her happy. Okay, thank you for your advice. Please pray for her. Yes, thank definitely. You. Because you're a devotee, your mother will get a lot of benefit. Yes. Okay. Thank you for your blessing. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare okay. Krishna Komadaki. Komadaki has a question. Uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Hare Krishna, my obeisances. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I was wondering, uh, when um, Krishna went to retrieve Sandipani Muni's son, right? Uh, what was the reason that he went to Varuna? I mean, like, uh, when someone uh, is, like, uh, someone passed away, they would uh, go to Yamaraj, isn't it? So I was wondering, why did he approach Varuna first, the ocean first? Well, he knew that the, the, he knew that the Guru's son had died in the sea. And he knew that there was this demon, Panchajanya, there. So Krishna really, I mean, he knew the sun was not there, but he wanted to get that conch shell. You see? So that de he knew that this demon, Panchajanya, was there, so he has to go there and kill him, and he can get the conch shell. So that was really why he went there. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. อาจารย์นะเอ่อคําถามของมานีนะคะถามว่าแล้วเอ่อทําไมกิจนาเนี่ยถึงไม่ไปหาโยมราชเลยโดยตรงทําไมถึงไปหาเทวเจ้าที่
I mean, he was willing to take the uh, soul back to the body. Is there a reason for such a, you know, such a pastime taking place here, Prithi? Well, Lord Krishna wants to satisfy his devotee. The Sandipani Muni asked him to, you know, because he does Sandipani Muni, what dakshin he wanted. So Sandipani Muni told him, this is what I want. I want my son back. So Lord Krishna said, okay. And so he went and did it. He brought him back. Right. Even though generally it's not supposed to be done, because even Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva don't normally do it. But the Lord just did it because he was asked for it. Yeah. He wants ah. to please, it, you know, because he'd asked, he'd asked Sandipani Muni, what action can I give you? So Sandipani Muni understood that this, this, these two boys are very, very special, that they, they have these powers. And so he asked them, bring my son back. I thought there may be another reason or pastime or something, but nothing of the sort. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Gurudev. Thank you. And later you'll hear also, when Devaki hears about this, then Devaki asks Krishna to bring back her Krishna's older brothers. Well, that you had six older brothers who were all killed by Kamsa. So can you bring mm -hmm. them back? So Krishna did. Right? I, uh, I thought those brothers, he, because they were representing uh, Kama, Krodha. No, 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 no. Those, those six brothers, they were all the, they were demigods. I need to read again. So they were cursed. <laughs> I'm mixing up. Anyway, Krishna brought them back. Ah. And then they sucked the, they took the milk of Devaki. Uh -huh. and, and and Krishna had already taken the milk from Devaki's breast. So then the, these six older brothers, they also came and they also took the milk from Devaki's breast. And this way they all became very purified and they went back to the spiritual to the heavenly planets. Went back oh. to be demigods. โอเคครูเบ๊ะแล้วคือมาตรีนะคะก็ถามถึงสาเหตุพิเศษนะที่ทําไมเอ่อมีสาเหตุพิเศษไหมทําไมถึงลูกของเอ่อพรามเนี่
let's say we are devotee, we, we, we understand like consciousness and karma thing, but for the non-devotee, how do we explain to them? Well, to, we... To accept back their parents. Yeah. We have to understand that we're not obliged to support their sinful activities. If they do a lot of sinful things like what you say, it's not the duty of the child, of the children, to support the parents in all their sinful activities. So does it mean the son can just abandon them like <laughs> Well, he, he may abandon them, but he has to do something worthy with his life. He should use his life for some good. It's not just abandon them and do nothing. You know, he should do some worthy activities. What, for example, a worthy activity? Mean like pious activity? For... Yeah, that's right. Pious activities. So. So I, I do, they should surrender to Krishna and become devotees. <laughs> yes, but anyway, the point is that they're not obliged to support their parents in their sinful activities. But it doesn't give them the right to go on with their sinful activities either. You know, are they doing, what kind of activities are they doing themselves? What, what are the, the children doing? What is the son doing? Is the son doing all good activities? Is he moral? Is he pious, religious? He should be. Normal life means a lot of sinful activities. <laughs> Eating, yeah. sleeping, mating, defending, yeah. Yeah, they are non devotees, so what, what can I say? What can you say? Yeah. Uh, they are non devotees. Yeah, right. But, but when I see them, they, they cannot forgive their parents and abandon their parents. Uh, yeah. As a, as a devotee, we also feel pity. Well, they cannot abandon them, but they should not encourage them with their sinful activities either. And if they, if they, you, they, they, they if, uh, he he disowned the parents, not his own life, his own. <coughs> huh? Disowned the parents. He, he disowned the parents. He disowned them. Yeah. Will he get any punishment if he disowned the parents? Just because the parents had done some sinful activities and he cannot forgive them. <laughs> but there was many years ago, I think the parents now had changed. Really? The parents have changed? I think so. Well, if they've changed, then you should forgive them. So, are we in the position to advise them to forgive them? I, I think I'm not in the position. Yeah, probably. Right. Probably you're not, yeah. <laughs> Very difficult. You're lucky you're a daughter. It's the duty of the son more to take care of the parents, right? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. Thank you very much. It's really the duty of the son. It's not so much the duty of the daughter to take care of the parents, and it's usually it means the duty of the oldest son because the oldest son is the one who inherits the the properties, and he inherits also the debts of the parents. If the parents leave debts behind, it's the duty of the children to take care of these debts which the parents leave. So, should take care of these things while the parents are alive. They want to deal with the parents and try to make sure, try to get them away from their bad activities. Of course, very difficult because they're elder. So elder people, the parents don't listen to the children. As I was telling the other lady, 
the parents don't listen to the children. They want to tell the children what to do. They don't like to be told what to do by their children. So it's very difficult sometimes to try to give any good instruction. If you give good instruction to people, they just simply become angry. So just let it be like that, oh, no need to do anything. Yeah, for you, you're lucky, nothing for you to do. You're okay. You just chant Hare Krishna and be a good okay, thank you. Be a good devotee. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Brahmash. Hare thank Krishna. Hare Krishna. Vaishnavi has a question? Yes, there is. Oh, Archana, you want to translate anything? I don't know. Uh, yes, okay. Maybe I can say that in English. Okay, Mataji, how are you? I got a lot of people who are in the world. They 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 are in the world. Thank you, Arjuna Mataji. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. I have two questions. Uh, I was thinking if these bones are not Krishna conscious bones, like the bones uh, which can be. Uh, uh, helpful for spiritual life or something like that. Maybe they should have asked some other boon, uh, like going back to God it or Krishna Prema, like that. And uh, my second question is, uh, this uh, Panjujanya sword and there are many things, are they in Santa Rasa Guru Maharaj? Because in, uh, in, in, in South India, the, some of the Aardvars represent these things, uh, this uh, uh, items of uh, Lord Narayana, the conch, uh, the Panjajanya, the Kastuba, Jim, like that. So I was wondering about the relationship with Krishna. Mm. Yes, Thank well, uh, well, Sandipani Muni, he, he, he asked his wife, you see, his wife maybe didn't have so much pure devotion and she naturally wanted to get her son back. So it was actually, a, you could say it was like an, a, an opportunity for Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram to show themselves as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, that they can do what nobody else could do. They could bring someone back from death. They could bring him back to life. And the, the, not, the, you know, who else could do that? Could anybody else, somebody says they're God, Okay, if somebody's God, then can you bring them, my dead son back to life? He's, in, he's, in, he's with Yamaraj. Can you go there to Yamaraj and bring him back? You know, Krishna could do it. If somebody else says he's God, then let him do that. You know, it's like a, a challenge to the atheists. You know, so that's yes. one way to understand. But, and and. Uh, as for the Kansha of Panchajanya, what is his rasa? Yeah, uh, generally we say these are like uh, the different paraphernalia which is used by Lord Krishna, like uh, Lord Krishna's shoes and his umbrella and his Brahmin thread and uh, his bed and his seat. These are all incarnations of Ananta Shesha. And I think also the ornaments which Krishna wears are also Ananta Shesha. But I don't know about the conch shell. The conch shell is very special. It's like, you know, it's like, uh, you know, they have the Sudarshan Chakra and you have the Komadaki Club and you have also the Lotus Flower as well as uh, Panchajanya. 
So very special paraphernalia of Lord Krishna. Is it in Shantarasa? Uh, I don't know. I'll have to find out. I'll, I'll try to ask somebody. I don't know exactly myself about what Rasa Kanshya is in. Maybe in Shantarasa, but it, it, we know it, it's described in Skanda Purana how uh, people just simply hear the sharp sound of the conch shell and all their sinful reactions are removed just by hearing. It's so powerful. So it could be in Shantaras. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. If you have Skanda Purana, you can read Skanda Purana and there's some references there about it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not able to understand what is Shantarasa Maharaj. Well, Shantarasa means that they appreciate the opulence of Krishna. They're attracted by the opulences or the beauty of Krishna, but they don't engage in any service. That's Shantarasa. Shantarasa is like that. It's like, you know, trees and flowers and like that. They're in Shantarasa. Sometimes even we say cows are in Shantarasa. You know, they appreciate the opulence of Krishna. They're attracted by the beauty of Krishna, but they're not actually engaged in any service. Okay. So Shantarasa is more like uh, somewhere, uh, you know, the, around the, the Bra Brahma Jyoti or like that. People in the Brahma Jyoti, sometimes we say they, they're more, somewhere close. But we, we do see also that there are Shantarasa the people, there's devotees, living entities in Shantarasa. All right. Okay. Yeah, now it's clear to yeah. They're just not active in service. Okay. So the trees in the Holy Dham and the birds in the Holy Dham and the different animals in the Holy Dham, you know, they're not actually doing any service for Krishna. But they're, they're all attracted by the beauty of Krishna, they're devotees because they're there in the Holy Dham. Yeah? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Now it's clear. Thank you very much. Archana? Yes. One cup time for Mother Dina have got him to why Tamay Pratan, you don't need Krishna call, but my high for you, Tamay Hot and make for Baba, call my day, come back Krishna, and I Krishna pray, and I come for that. แต่ในกุลมาลาบอกว่าตอนแรกเนี่ยหลังจากที่พรามได้โอกาสแบบนั้นเขาก็ทําภรรยาเขาก่อนอาจจะภรรยาเขาเนี่ยยังไม่ได
I thank all the thank devotees you. for their participation. Thank you, Gordon. Thanks to you also. So please stay safe and healthy and hope to see you all next week. Srila Prabhupada ki. Yay. Go back to Brinda ki. Yay.